Today, I'm going to show you how to diagnose a no star condition. I'm going to show you how to diagnose this right on the spot. Okay, here we go. All right, go ahead and crank it. Okay, okay. All right, so we got a no star condition here. I'm gonna show you what to do right now. Okay, I'm gonna do this as if you're by yourself, okay? You got nobody here helping you, so this is what you do. You see that right there? That's the starter solenoid right there. See how I got that hooked up right there? You wanna get that on just like that. That's the starter solenoid. Okay, now come up here. See this here? You're gonna touch that onto the positive battery terminal, but not yet. You gotta put the car in neutral, okay? Okay, I got the car in neutral. And we got the wire hooked up to the starter solenoid. Now, what you do is this. You're going to touch this on a positive battery terminal. A positive, not the negative, okay? And you're going to get it cranking, okay? Just like that, okay? Now, leave it like that. Now, when you have a no-star condition, what you're checking for is spark, fuel, compression. But in this case, we can't check compression. But so, for right now, we're checking for spark and fuel. But spark, fuel, compression and a sensor, something electrical, will cause a no-star condition. So now, what you do is this. Come over here, pull this spark plug wire out like that, okay? Get a screwdriver, okay? Stick it down like that until you're tight in the terminal, okay? You're gonna stick it down in like that, and you're gonna put it on a ground, okay? Which would be, let's go with this right here. This would be a good ground, these here, these are attached to the uh, body or the engine chassis, okay? And you're gonna leave that with a gap, okay? See that gap between that bolt, the top of the bolt and the screwdriver? Right there. They about an eighth of an inch, okay? Then now look over here. You're gonna touch this terminal and look for spark. You're gonna touch this and see if we got spark. no spark okay so I'm gonna pull another wire just in case just to double check put that back in I'm gonna pull the number four okay put this back in here now I'm gonna use this one okay because I know these are good grounds all right so I'm gonna use that right there and put it about that close So, let me crank it. Ready? Here we go. Nothing. So we have no spark in this car. We have no spark here. All right? So, that tells me that we got a situation going on either here in the distributor or the computer or the wiring. Distributor, computer, or wiring. Okay? So, I'm not going to do all that here because it takes a lot of diagnostics. So we're going to take this home and then we're going to diagnose it at home. I'm going to show you exactly what to do and this principle works for all cars. Before I call the tow truck, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you another thing you need to check. You need to check for fuel, okay? This is the fuel supply line that goes to the fuel rail that are mounted, that have the fuel injectors mounted to it, okay? This feeds fuel in here and this is under pressure. Keep in mind, when you take this loose, it's going to squirt fuel. It could go in your eyes. So, wear glasses. I didn't bring my glasses today because I forgot, man. All right, but make sure you wear glasses when you mess with fuel, okay? Because this stuff squirts and it'll squirt far in your face. What I got here is a water bottle. Okay, I'm gonna slice this so we can use this to catch the fuel, okay? Get this ready down here. See that fuel? Squirt it quick. So, you got to be very careful with this stuff. Make sure your ignition switch is in the on position. Here we go. We got fuel, okay? So we know we don't have a problem with the fuel. But at the same time, you can have an issue with the fuel injectors. With the pulse width. But that's a whole different story. Watch that fuel line. Ready? Crank it. We're good to go. We got fuel. Okay, so we're going to tow this to the house because this is going to take some diagnostics and I don't want to do that here on the spot. Okay, now we're going to check the codes anyway. Okay, we're waiting. 
Onboard rating is tested complete. Okay, we only have the uh, catalytic converter code. Okay, this is the PO420. That has nothing to do with this right now. Okay, this code is just telling us that we may have a bad cat. And this catalytic converter is bad. I already checked it. Um, this code has nothing to do with this situation here. Okay, this will not affect the car the way it is. This will never cause a car to not start. Okay, unless the catalytic converter is clogged up, but this is not a clogged up catalytic converter. Now, if you didn't have fuel coming from here into the fuel rail, but you have spark, this is what you do. Get some carburetor spray and spray it into the intake manifold, okay, on top of the throttle body. All right, and what you do is, I only have a little bit left, but this is what you do. Crank the engine, and as you're cranking it, you spray it. Go for it, bro. Okay, see there, we didn't get anything. Usually when you have a little, when you have spark and you spray this into the intake manifold on the top of the throttle body with, or carburetor, whatever you're working on, you will get, the car will begin to start. The car will start right up. But in this case, we don't have any spark at all. So the fluid I'm spraying in here is doing absolutely nothing. It's going inside the combustion chamber and there's nothing happening to it. There's no conversion. It's not converting into power because we have absolutely no spark. So this test, done, okay? So we definitely know we don't have spark, okay? But we got fuel coming, up, coming in. Now let's check to see if we got power on our feed and control wire, okay? Okay, that's the control wire. We got light, put it on the other one. Okay, we got power there. Those two wires are good. We're just checking the circuits. Okay, we got power there on the control, power on the feed. Now this one, power on the control, power on the feed. Okay, now our circuits are good. So now I'm gonna crank the car. All right, and we're gonna see if we got any pulse. No pulsing, put it on the next one. Keep in mind we have the ignition switch in the on position. We got no pulsing. Okay, let's just skip all that. Go straight here. Okay. Other wire. Okay, there's a crankshaft position sensor. There's a top dead center position sensor and a cylinder position sensor, all located inside here. Okay, inside the distributor. Now what we're gonna do is check the resistance on each one. Okay, so now on each one of these, you have to check the resistance and you have to be between 350 to 700 ohms of resistance. Okay, so here we go. Let's check it out. So what she's going to do is she's going to find all these numbers just like that. Okay. So she's checking. Which numbers are you checking now? Two and six. So on two and six, these two right here. So number two. And six, we have 374 ohms of resistance. So let's put that, 374, okay? Now, three and seven. Now we're on three and seven, these two right here. We have 371, 371 ohms of resistance, okay? Now on four and eight, which are the last two on that side. We have 362 ohms of resistance. So three, six, two. Okay. So far, all these pickup sensors—that's what they're called, pickup sensors—they fall within the parameters of 350 to 700 ohms of resistance. So, as far as the ohms are and resistance are on the uh, pickup sensors, all that's good. Okay. Next step is to crack this open. All right, and go a little deeper and check the coil and the igniter. All right, the igniter is also called the ignition control module. Okay, now take your distributor off. Don't take the wires off, you don't have to. But if you do, just remember this, okay? This distributor goes just like that at an angle, okay? And this here is number one, three, 
4, and 2. So the firing order is 13, 42. 1, 3, 4, 2. Inspect all this. That just looks kind of corroded. All the terminals. But it's not a big deal. That's still uh, acceptable. Okay, so it's not a big deal. Just do a visual on that. We're after this right here. Okay, next we want to check the coil. What you got to do is hook up your test light to a ground. This is a good ground here. This is two. Okay, crank the engine and then uh, see if we got spark. Keep in mind we have the ignition switch on the on position. See that little spark? Now crank the engine. After we do this, then we come down here. Crank it real quick. See what happens. Okay. So we get a spark off and on. Listen to this, we're getting a tiny spark off and on. We're not even doing nothing. We just got the ignition switch on the on position. And there's a spark that's occurring. The igniter is sparking it. But it's either deep inside the tower or inside here. But we're not even doing anything. You hear that? So what we're gonna do is take that apart and see if we got any, uh, if we can see a spark or any arcing. That's what it, it sounds like arcing. On these Civics, there's a bolt that holds the rotor. You gotta turn the rotor. Just, just barely turn it. There it is right there. Okay, just expose that bolt so you can get the rotor off. And make sure you push down real good on that bolt because if you don't, you can strip it. I've stripped a few of these, man. I had to chisel the whole rotor off on a couple cars, on a couple Civics. Okay, because that bolt, it gets rusty in there. See, with the ignition switch off, you don't hear the, the arcing anymore. So... We got an issue. Here's okay, the rotor. Let's take this off. Now let's turn the ignition switch back on. Look at that. This looks all burned. This looks burned up, kind of. Earlier we got a spark. We didn't even do anything. Just like that. Right there. Go inside there. Cool. Okay, there's another arc right there. Go back to the top of the tower. Yeah. The primary windings, put it on the, the negative, see if we got the light, yeah, we got power going to the coil. That's the negative side of the coil, that's the primary winding, put it on the other side, okay, we got power going to the coil. Now, question is, will the igniter pulse, send pulses to the coil? That's the question here. So now, let's crank the car with the test light on. Now put your test light on the primary, make sure you're grounded, we're grounded right there. Now put it down here, make sure the light's on, and then crank it. Okay, now put it on the negative. We're sparking like crazy over here. Go for it. Okay. Well, I think we have an igniter problem. Okay, what we're gonna do now is take the coil off and exchange it. I don't think the problem is the coil though. I think the problem is the igniter right here. Okay, she's gonna put that coil on there. I'm just looking at this, seeing how if I can see any evidence of arcing. Okay. Okay, now what I'm looking for is evidence of arcing. Look at this here. Look at that. Look at that black area right here. And look at this. Yeah. Bright light, dim light. Ooh, it just Ooh. Got gotcha. you? Yeah. Okay, now. Listen to this. This is the new coil here. Now we're gonna put the light on the negative winding. Look at it, it does the same exact thing. 
That's what the old uh, that's what the old coil did. Okay, it's gonna dim. Okay, now go to the uh, positive. Okay, we both we got light on both. Okay, now see if we got spark coming out of the top of the coil. Okay, same situation. We have a we have a problem with the igniter, definitely. We're not gonna get any spark. Watch this. Go ahead, crank it. So now we're looking for spark right here. Ready? Yeah. Okay. So the problem here is we have a bad igniter. What the job of the igniter is to do is to turn off and on these primary windings that are inside this coil here. Okay, now let's see if we got 12 volts from the black and yellow wire. Okay, 12.4 volts. We're good there. We got voltage going to the ICM, ignition control module, igniter, same thing. We got a black wire here with the yellow stripe, okay? Black with the yellow stripe. I'm gonna make sure we got battery voltage from here to this point right here, to this other black with the yellow stripe wire. Okay, oh, just got zapped got right you. there. Yeah, be careful, I just got zapped, okay? So we're getting spark. Uh, <laughs> we're getting spark, but in a uh, weird way here, okay? That means that this igniter is producing voltage, okay? We are getting voltage to the coil, but the problem is, is it's building up on its own and just zapping. So something's going down with this igniter here. I just got zapped and that went straight through my arm. Your whole arm? Yep. It went up my arm because I touched this part right here. That was a serious zap right there. So you got to be careful with this stuff. Okay. We got the ignition and the on position. Okay. And I'm checking battery voltage here. And ground. Okay. So. Look at the meter, we got battery voltage, okay? So, we have voltage to the coil. Okay, here's what I believe is going on. We have a bad igniter, okay? As soon as we turn the ignition switch on, the igniter starts going haywire and it starts producing its own signal, causing the primary circuit to produce a magnetic field and collapsing it and causing the spark, okay? And that's how I got zapped right now. We're not even doing nothing. All we did was we had the ignition switch on. So this is what's going down. The pickup sensors, which are these. There's three of them in here. The pickup sensors are sending a position signal to the PCM, which is inside there. Okay? Then the PCM sends triggering signals to pulse the igniter, which is right here. Okay? which tells the igniter when to go off and when to go on, okay? Then the igniter sends triggering signals to the coil, which is through here, through this wire here, all right? These two wires, I mean, okay? So it sends triggering signals to the coil to allow voltage to pass through the primary windings, which are these right here. I'll explain it right now, okay? So, which is the off and on switch, pretty much. That's all it is, okay? So now, What's going on is this. We are getting voltage coming up through here. Like that, right? And it goes through the primary windings, okay? These are the small, tiny ones that are on the outside. Okay, then you got thicker windings inside here, okay? <clears throat> when you got voltage going through the primary windings, which is this, from here to here, you're producing a magnetic field, like that. You can't see it though, it's invisible. Okay, this is what I learned in school back in 91. This is an old school coil, but this is the same exact principle on this here. Okay, you're creating a magnetic field that you can't see. It's an invisible magnetic field. Okay, and once you cut off the primary circuit, voltage is also applied in here, okay? Voltage is also going on and current is flowing through these secondary windings. This is the secondary winding of the tower here, okay? As soon as you turn that switch off, you disconnect this, the magnetic field collapses, causing a voltage spike to occur. Okay, and once you get that voltage spike, 
the voltage spike, the spark comes out here. Then that's where you get the spark. Bam! On the tip of the spark tester. Well, our light. Okay? And that's how you get the spark that you saw on the tip of the test light. Okay? And that's how your spark is produced and goes to the spark plugs. Okay? And that's the deal right there. Right now, we got a situation going on down here. Okay? We're getting sparked when we're not even doing nothing, when nothing is even happening. So something is going haywire in here. And I believe it's the igniter. Now what we're gonna do is check the primary and the secondary resistance, which is this one here, this is the primary. This one here and here, primary. And then to measure from the top here to down on one of these would be secondary, either one. How do I know it's not the coil? Because I swapped it out, okay? This is a good coil that I had laying around, okay? That means this one is still good also. So we're gonna put this one back and I'm gonna keep that one. Next, you have to remove the wiring from the harness. And then there's two small screws below the ignition control module. They're Phillips, the size. And then just take the ICM out. The bolts are down here. All right, we got the new igniter here and the old one here, all right? We, before we put this on, we wanna show you the readings on this igniter, okay? This is the new one, this is the old one, okay? We got zero on these two, right here. 10 on this one, these two here, 22.8 on that, okay? Zero here, 60 there, 3.6 here, okay? Look at the difference. New one, old one. Did you record it right? It's just like that. So just put those two together and then hook up all your wires on the igniter and then you guys know how to do the rest. I'm not going to record all that. We're going to hook up all the wiring and then check for spark. Okay, right now she just put the igniter on. Now what we're doing is we're waiting. Remember before when this was making a funny noise and it was clicking, it was also getting very hot. Now, we're not at all. We don't have an issue anymore. Before, we would turn the ignition on, then this would spark on its own. It would build up, then it would collapse the electrical field that was uh, being produced in there. This new igniter is no longer doing that. Definitely have a big change with this new igniter. This was also getting very hot. By now, it's not hot anymore. Now, hook up your test light to ground. We got the new igniter in there. Now we're going to test for spark. Okay? She's got the test light next to that. Go for it. Now she's going to crank it. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, do it again. And pull it away a little bit further. In and out. There we go right there. We got spark. Now watch this. If this light flickers when you're cranking, that means that everything on that side of the igniter is good to go, which is the igniter and pickup sensors, okay? Remember, there's three in here. Okay, so put it on the negative and start to crank it. And watch what happens. Okay? See how it's flickering? Do it one more time. Okay? That's on the negative side, all right, of the primary windings. If it wasn't pulsating, then the issue would be this way, which it was before. Remember, we didn't have no pulsating. Now that we have a new igniter in there, we have pulsing, okay? That means the problem is this way, but there is no longer a problem. How do I know that? Because this coil's good, okay? But it could also be this, the wires, or the plugs, but it's not this either, okay? So that just leads us to the igniter, okay? But it could also be the PCM, but that's a whole different story there, okay? But we're good to go. Our resistance showed that we're good to go, and now this coil is good, okay? We got everything together, now it's time to start it, okay? Everything is in there, okay, go for it. There it is. Go ahead again. There 
It'll go. Keep going. You gotta get the fuel pulse going. Okay, cut it. Remember the pulse width? So now, it'll go. This happened to me before, okay? I don't know why you Civics do that, but that pulse width, it's tricky, man. Crank it. See? You got the spark. Okay. We got spark. We're good on that. Now, go for it. Start it. There we go right there. Bad igniter. Okay? That's what the issue was with this vehicle. We had a bad igniter. On the injectors, I'll show you that in another video. One time I didn't have any pulse width, and it drove me crazy, man. Okay, let me tell you something. You don't have to change the whole distributor. I don't care what they tell you, man. You don't have to change the whole distributor. This job we did right here, they'll charge you like 600 bucks, man. Especially if you go to a dealer, you're gonna get banked on even more. All we did was change the igniter in here. That was 20 bucks, man. I got that from a dude in LA. Yeah, I sent him 20 bucks and he sent me an igniter. Look at that now. Good to go. If you guys want his phone number, I'll put it right here. There's a cat in LA. He has all kinds of Honda parts, okay, for distributors. Um, let me tell you something though. You don't have to change the whole distributor. I don't care what they tell you, man. If you have an issue with the spark or your pulse width and your injectors, chances are it's either your igniter, like the one we just changed, your coil, or your pickup sensors. There's, there's a cylinder position sensor, there's a crankshaft position sensor, and there's a top dead center position sensor, okay? It's either one of those, man. So, do your diagnostics, man. And do, don't just go change the whole distributor if they tell you you need a distributor. Forget that, man, okay? This is the cheap way to do it. This is a very cheap way to do it. This is how you save money. Do not let them rip you off out there, man. I just showed you how to uh, attack a no-star condition, and that's what the deal is right there. Before I finish the video, let me show you what was going on here. What you had is 12 volts, okay? Going to the sensors, okay? You have the crankshaft, position sensor, the top dead center sensor, and the cylinder position sensor. Oops. Okay, you had all these three sensors inside of the distributor, okay? 12 volts is supplied to them. They send signals to the PCM. Okay, they send signals to the PCM. PCM sends a signal to the igniter. This is the I. C, M, or ignition control module, or igniter. Okay? And this sends signal to the coil. This is the tower right here, the one that zapped me right there. Okay? And inside here, here is primary windings and secondary windings. Okay? Okay, this, let me write this, this is the coil, okay, then this goes to the distributor cap, okay, then these go to the four spark plug wires, or six or eight, whatever car you have, okay, keep in mind, this is Asian vehicles right here, okay, American cars are a little bit different, all right, but it's the same exact principle. These are the spark plug wires, and then you have your spark plugs, all right? Right there, and that's how you get your spark, right there. Remember we had no spark at the beginning? Now we got spark, okay? And that's the process right there. This is the whole ignition system. Remember, once we tested the primary side of the coil, and the secondary, well, the secondary's out here, but we tested the primary. Okay, we tested the negative. Negative is on this side. Okay? We only had light when the igniter lit it up. Okay? Remember the igniter was going off and on. B. 
building up the magnetic field inside here and collapsing it, causing a spark, a miscellaneous spark out of nowhere. It's random, sparking. Okay? So we test it from this point right here. This determined which way we were going to go. Okay? Since we had 12 volts going here, right here, we knew we had 12 volts. We knew we had 12 volts, but for some reason, we didn't have any flickering, no pulsing. So that means you go that way, okay? It'll be this way, all right? And the problem was this, the igniter right there. But if we would have flickering and the test light was pulsing, then you go this way, okay? Either your coil, the distributor, I mean distributor cap, the rotor on the inside, the wires, or spark plugs, okay? So you're either going that way, which is the secondary ignition, or this way, which is the primary ignition, okay? There's two sides, a secondary, a primary, and a secondary, okay? All this back here is primary, okay? All this is secondary, the high voltage side, okay? And it's that simple, okay? That's how you diagnose that stuff, man. And you gotta figure out what is preventing you from getting spark anytime you don't have spark. And that's what the issue was right there. The igniter right there. But see, it could have also been the coil, okay? If we had spark here, I mean, if we had pulsing here, if we had pulsing and flickering here, to check this coil, okay? I would have checked the resistance in it. And if the coil was good, then I would have went here to the distributor cap and rotor, okay? I would have checked the, uh, then I would check the terminal, okay? To see if everything was corroded or whatever, or pitted, you know? Then I would check the resistance on the wires, okay? It's uh, every 10,000, every foot should be around 10,000, 12,000 ohms. You gotta check on your own car though, okay? You gotta make sure you know exactly what the resistance is supposed to be on your vehicle for each wire, okay? And it's, uh, I figured all that. Anyways, so then I would've went to the wires, and then I would've went to the spark plugs. Are they all fouled? Chances are all spark plugs are not fouled, okay? That's pretty rare. But you might have one or two, you know, that could cause some misfires and stuff. But anyways, that's how you do it, man. You're either going to the primary side or the secondary. But it could also be the PCM, okay? It could also be these, too, all right? It could also be the uh, pickup sensors. These are all pickup sensors, like I told you. These are very important right here, these pickup sensors. All these three produce a signal to the PCM, okay? Without this signal here, you're not getting nothing over here. You're not getting any spark at all, okay? If one of these cuts out, just say the top dead center sensor, okay? Or the crankshaft position sensor, that's on all cars. You're not getting any spark. You're not getting any signal telling the PCM the position of the engine, of the camshaft and the crankshaft. Then it's not gonna say anything to the igniter or the coil, okay? And that's it, man, it's that simple. I know it seems a little difficult, but this just broke it down. That way you can get it and you can attack yours, okay? This is the same principle for every single car, except sometimes this, the PCM, instead of these being on this side, the PCM will be, will send signals to the uh, pickup sensors on this side. The pickup will be on this side. You know, the crankshaft, the camshaft sensor. And then it'll send signals to the igniter, you know? You know, it's just flipped around on some cars, but you're gonna have to find out what and where each component is located, okay? So you can know where to tap into to diagnose to see if you got 12 volts here, uh, going here, or to the igniter, okay? It's that simple, man, all right? School your kids. Yeah. Do not let the streets school your kids. All right? Stay yeah. on them. Do not let any negative influence school your children. Even if you don't have kids, man, I'm talking about your nephews and your nieces. Okay? Keep schooling them, man. Do not let the streets or any bad influence school your children. Do not let anybody get a hold of them that is a bad influence and that can affect their life in a negative way, okay? Keep them active, keep them away from the video games. Get them off those games, man. Get them outside, 
If you let your kids sit at home all day and do nothing, guess what's gonna happen to your child? You know what's gonna happen. Your child is gonna grow up and grow up lazy, uncreative, no goals, no vision. Okay, Bible says where there's no vision, the people perish. The reason why there's no vision is because a lot of people are not taught to be creative, and to get out there and go get it. That's why at the end of my videos, I tell you to go get it. Okay, I'm not playing, I mean that. Your job as a parent, but well, you don't necessarily have to be a parent, but your job is to school a child, okay? If you are a parent, your job is to impart wisdom on them. Build them up, develop their character so they can grow strong. Don't let your kids grow up with a weak mentality, all right? Keep them in school, do not let them drop out. I dropped out of school in ninth grade, right when I started ninth grade, like a couple months after that. Anyways, yeah, I never graduated. But today, I believe in self-education. I've educated myself. I've had my kids show me how to punctuate, taught me math, fractions, all that stuff. Yes, my kids showed me how to punctuate. Before I started making YouTube videos, I had my, my boy and my daughter show me how to punctuate, where to put commas, periods, question marks, all that stuff. I didn't know none of that stuff because I was so busy running the streets because I got hooked up with the negative influences out there on the streets and it just tore me down. Anyways, back to the point. The point is keep schooling your kids. The Bible says train your child up in the way he should go and he will not depart from it. That means make them solid, give them a strong foundation. That way nothing can break them, nothing. You hear me? N absolutely nothing. You don't want to send your kids out there without any education on what's going on. You, you got to keep them up. You got to give them the scoop on what's going on out there. You don't just send your kids out there because you got, you got people out there that are prey on your children. It's like wolves. You got wolves out there who will prey on your kids. I'm not playing, man. I ran the streets for years since I was young. I've seen so many wolves out there. I've dealt with so many shady people. You're either getting influenced or you're being an influence. One more time. You're either getting influenced or you're being an influence. Make sure you're being, make sure you're having an impact on your child's life, but not just a child. I'm talking about anybody, especially for those of you who know Christ. You're a leader, man. God appointed you, God ordained you to be a leader. Take charge and step up. There are people who need you out there. There are people who need your help. Do not stop, do not let them down. You got something that somebody needs. You've been through something that somebody needs. You have something that you can give to somebody that can build them up and make them strong again and inspire them and get them to lift their heads up. Look at some people today, man. Some of them walk with their head down, drag their feet, tuck their tail in because they haven't been taught. You have the strength and the ability to build people up. Don't sandbag it, man. Do not sandbag it and sit on the skill and the abilities and the strength that God has given you. So get out there, stay strong, stay bold, stay fervent, stay hungry for the Lord. Those of you who don't know the Lord, get your heart right with God. God's not playing, man. Quit letting the influences of the world, everything you've been taught that is bringing you down, that is negative, quit letting that junk tear you up. You know it's hurting you. The, the alcoholism, the weed smoking, the pill popping, the secret sins you got behind closed doors, pornography, whatever, quit letting that stuff overrun you. God said, come to me, all ye that labor and that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's Jesus Christ. No, I'm not stopping talking about Jesus Christ, man. I will never stop. You see those kids over there? That's the future. So this school, this is where they're getting educated. All right? But you got to go beyond this. You got to go beyond the school system, man. You got to educate your kids, man, because this is the future of America. These guys, okay? These guys are going to have an impact on what's going to go on in the near future. A serious impact. If they play video games all day, 
if they're caught up with all that junk, they are going to destroy America. America's already screwed up. It's already screwed up. But your circle of influence around you, you can do something to make that change, okay? Your neighborhood, the homeless people, anybody who's going through it, who have the ability to help somebody. Don't just sit on your talents, man, that God has given you. Yes, you, even you who are not safe. You got your skills from God, straight up. I know some of you don't believe it. Some of you guys tell me that God didn't help me do this stuff, man. That's a lie from the pit. Everything you have, every skill you have, every, every dollar you have, everything you got, you got that from God. You don't want to believe it. You don't want to give God honor and, great, and be grateful to him. You want to say you did it on your own. You didn't do it on your own. Everything you have, you got it from Jesus Christ. Don't get it twisted. But the future is right there, man. It's in your children. It's in those, your nieces and your nephews. Everybody you see around you. Make an impact. Be strong. Stay solid. Remember, Jesus Christ loves you. And he died on the cross for your sins. If your heart ain't right, if you ain't doing right, repent. Repent means change your mind. 180 degrees. Change your mind. Be done with that junk that's tearing you up. In Jesus' mighty name. Go smash on it.